Hello, hello, welcome back to the show Happy Fit and Strong. I am your host, Virginia Royer, and today we are diving in something really important to live a happier life. It's really important for me because I grew up a lot this past few years and I realized enough is enough. Why? You should not, you should never be the convenient and disposable girl. You know, the one who always says yes. The one who always makes things easy for others at the expense of herself. It's time to change that. It's time to prioritize yourself and your well-being. First, let's talk about what it means to be convenient for others. Being convenient is when you always say yes and when you prioritize others to accommodate them, their needs, and their well-being, even when you don't want to. And sometimes you said yes anyway, because of a lot of reason. But often, it's at your own expense. And when saying yes conflicts with your own desire and needs, that's when it's not okay. You know, when you make things super easier for everyone else, you please others, and you become the nice-to-go girl when someone needs a favor. But that's it. Because one day, you realize that one is not good for you, but also people misread your message, and it's all about them. They don't really care about you. They do not respect you, and they do not appreciate you. Harsh, I know. But that's the reality when you realize that you're just the go-to girl, convenient, that will do everything, and that's it. That's not okay. Because unfortunately, unfortunately, saying yes to others is often equal to saying no to yourself. And you end up neglecting your own well-being and priorities. Sounds familiar, right? You are not alone in this. Many of us fall into this pattern. And you know why? Because nothing is wrong with being a nice human being. Because if you can, why not? The problem is how people see you and how you show up to the world. But there is a difference between being nice and helpful and being used. Because you don't choose to be used. You want to be nice. You want to be helpful. But when people don't know the difference, they think they can just use you. And that that is the point that is not okay. Because they take you for granted. They know that, oh, I will call her. She will come and she will help me. And they don't give you nothing. Is that not crazy? I am a giver. And if I can, I like to help people. And I don't see nothing wrong in that. But the question is, why are we seeking to please others? Especially when again and again, it makes you just frustrated at the end. And it should not. So there can be numerous reasons, like seeking approval. (laughs) You know, when you want to please over, you get a sense of acceptance the feeling of belonging. And sometimes that's what we, we are looking for. We want approval. We want to belong. And, you know, it can be in relationship, in friendship, in all this, even in the family uh, dynamic. Also, is when we seek validation. Here we go. Validation is always that. Pleasing others can really serve a form of validation. It reinforces the sense of self-worth, like through positive feedback and recognition. And we, we want that. Yeah, we have to admit that we want that. And sometimes we are looking for that. We would like people to validate ourselves. Avoiding conflict. How many times? How many times? You're doing things you don't want to do because you just want to avoid an argument. It's less stressful to do those things than to get into a disagreement and a big argument. You know what I mean? 
And especially sometime in um, the wrong relationship, I would say, it's really difficult to say no. So you're doing the things, but you end up frustrated. And at the end, you're just the convenient girl. And it happened a lot with me, a lot. It can also come from the lack of self-esteem. If you don't love yourself enough, you get into this pattern of pleasing people because you think that your worth is based on how well you can meet over expectation. And that's a big, big mistake. It's why it's so important to love yourself. It's so important to love yourself. Also, fear of rejection. Yes, that's a big one. Yep. You want to be loved. You want to be loved. And you are scared that people will love you less or abandon you if you don't please them. Let me tell you that I got into that trap a lot, especially with my kids. I don't know if you can relate, but sometimes I have to admit, I have difficulty to grant them. And I know that deeply is because I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared that I stop loving me. And I have to reason myself like, yes, they will still love me. They need to be grounded because it's better for them. But, you know, also because, um, especially if you were in an abusive relationship, you know what I'm talking about. Abusers always use that specific fear to control you. And somehow you become that person who always cares that people stop loving you. I know it's crazy, but that's the reality. One last point, reciprocity. Yes, deep down, and you cannot lie to yourself, even unconsciously, you have the hope to receive the same treatment or favor in return. Yes, because it's a human feeling. And even if you don't do it for that, you expect at least a little bit of respect. Do you recognize yourself in this motivation why we want to please people? Again, nothing is wrong with being a giver, but understanding the why can help you navigate this tendency to please others at any cost and can help you to do it in a healthier and more balanced way. Because being the convenient girl has a cost. And trust me, trust me, it's too expensive. It's too expensive. Sure, being the go-to girl might feel great initially, right? You feel needed. You feel appreciated. Sometimes you even feel indispensable and you feel loved. But over time, constantly being there for everyone can really, really tear you down. It can take a toll on your health, your sense of self-worth and your happiness. And you can even feel frustrated and resentful. Seriously, putting everyone else's needs before your own can have a big health impact. Really big. For sure, it starts slowly, but it can lead you to a lot of stress, burnout. Like, and stress is not good. You know, it's called the, the silent killer. So stress is not good. And when you do things and it stress you out too much, you're putting your health at risk. Did you ever notice how stress can impact you physically and emotionally? But really, like you have real symptoms like headache, stomach issue, uh, skin issue. Me, I get a lot of chest pain when I'm overstressed. It's like squeezing my chest and I feel not good. That's why it's really important to take care of yourself and stop ignoring your own needs. That's really important. You cannot pour from an empty cup. It's not selfish, you know, it's self-care. Always please others can also cost on your personal growth. When you always prioritize over, guess what? Guess what? You miss out on chances to grow and chase your own patience. You are putting your dream on hold, and that is not fair. And it happened to me a lot. 
I did it, always helping my exes, always building a company, launching a podcast, be there, doing all the housework, doing the grocery shopping. I don't even know if my ex went to grocery shopping once with me. Seriously, I was doing everything because he wanted time to work on his project. And during that time, I couldn't work on mine. And what it was really, really frustrating is when I was scheduling to do something for myself and I have to change my plan because suddenly we have over plan to do. And sometimes for sure I did my plan, but it was always him first, me after. And that is not the way to go. Yes, you are an amazing girlfriend, but what do you get at the end? Nothing, because he blindsided me the same way that if I was a bad girl. But during that time, there's a lot of things that for myself that I put on hold. Why? I was super convenient and disposable when he didn't need me anymore. Like a dirty plastic bag that you throw in a trash. That's it. So even if you feel great at the beginning to feel needed and um, loved and appreciated, when you realize that they just use you, it's not a great feeling. It's not a great feeling and it impacts your health as well. Yeah, being a wife, being a mom, being in a relationship can really quickly, quickly become all about others' needs and never about yours. So you have to be really careful with that, really. Imagine, imagine all your skill you could develop and the personal growth you could achieve if you had more time for yourself, if you have used that time for yourself. Sometimes I'm like, why? I didn't use that time for myself and now I'm here starting a new career because I spent my life helping others to succeed. How fair is that? So now it's my time. <laughs> I am really becoming more selfish, but I will more say self-aware of my time and my value and my work. You know, it's important to find the balance where you can be there for others. You can help them, you can do things for them, but without rejecting your own growth and happiness, because that is important too. You are important too. After all, you deserve it all. You deserve to follow your patience and live a fulfilling life, right? So, how do you stop this cycle? First off, you have to start live life with intention. I post a lot of that on my social media, live life with intention. So, how can you do that? Make mindful choices. Learn a way to say no. It's not easy. <laughs> but learn a way to say no when you need to. Nothing is wrong in saying no. It's okay to set boundaries. And saying no doesn't make you a bad person. You have to stop thinking that. I don't know you, but sometimes I was feeling bad if I say no. I'm, I, I'm feeling bad. But no. No. If it's not good for you, you can say no. And it's hard to admit, but sometimes it's the opposite. People will respect you more if you respect your own boundaries. You have to reset your mindset about that if you feel that way. You are not a bad person. It just means that you are respecting yourself and your own limits, which is good. You know, by being more selective with your energy and your time, you will realize that you have more time to give to the things and more time to give to the people that truly matter. And that, that is priceless. Also, you have to make self-care a priority. Take time for yourself to do the things that make you happy and fulfilled. Whether it's reading a good book, going for a walk, practicing yoga, or just taking a nap, find what recharges you and make it a regular part of your routine. I love to go to the beach and I'm trying to go to the beach once a week 
And I love paddleboarding. I trying to go paddleboarding once a week. And I love to go to coffee shop. For me, it's a self-care routine to go to coffee shop to work. I find myself more focused and more creative. So that's, that is a really a self-care routine for me that is really important and that I will not give up on. <laughs> anyway, um, again, I will repeat, we cannot pour from an empty cup. You, you need to fill up your own cup. It's not selfish. And you can still help people, but not in a way of being just convenient and disposable for them. Just in a way that when you can, you can. When you cannot, you cannot. You know, especially if you have a lot on your plate with work, family, responsibility, a lot of stress. You know, it can be super overwhelming and you can get the feeling of constantly being convenient for others. So that's not the goal. The goal is to get out of that cycle and to start to live with intention. Finally, you have to focus on building stronger relationship. Yes, you know, that kind of relationship that they are mutually supportive, whether it's with your partner, your friend, your family, whatever, you have to have mutually supportive relationship. I think it's the basic. And a lot of time we forgot about that because all the reason we say before, we want validation, a approval, being loved. But you know, enough with one way street relationship. Especially when you open your eyes and realize that these people, they don't even appreciate you for who you are. They just take everything they can out of you and they let you down when they don't need you anymore. And you know what is a good sign to recognize these people is they never interact with you. They never check on you. They never return any favor, but they contact you only when they need something, you know, because they just see you as the go-to person to solve their problem and help them. But they don't respect you or your time. No. To get really personal, uh, you know, I'm doing voiceover and sometimes I have to edit and I have this big, big uh, client and, and I have to deliver in a certain um, time. So I have the deadline coming up and suddenly my ex was like, oh, I want to eat. And I say, well, if you want to eat, you go to the kitchen. No, but I want to eat now. I would like you to. And you know, the way he asked me and I was like frustrated because I wanted to say no. But at the same time, I wanted to please him and I end up being in a rush and over stress with my contract. And it's my fault because I should have to say no. I didn't stand up for myself and I end up being the one frustrated. And that's teach me a lesson that I need to do the things that is for myself, not for others. Anyway, just, a, just an example, but that's not going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and when you notice that for this kind of people, you're just convenient and disposable, it's not full at first. But after, you feel good to say, you know what? No, because that's my boundaries. Also, you know, when people show you their true face, believe them. Because to be honest, in a supportive relationship, people will not ask you something that they know that will have a cost for you, right? You know, a lot of time we find excuses, excuses, excuses. Oh, he's stressed out. Oh, he cannot do it. Oh, he wants me to cook because he loves my cooking, whatever it is. No excuses to be an asshole. I'm sorry, but that's the word. There are no excuses to have a bad behavior. There are no excuses to use over people. There are no excuses to use the kindness to get out of something from people. There are no excuses. And when someone doesn't treat you the right way, believe them that they will never treat you and respect you. I know it's hard to hear, but it's the truth. So you deserve to be treated with respect in any kind of relationship, any kind. And also remember that they are not defining you. You can be whoever you want to be. 
And that is really important to remember. Anyway, spend time with people who value you because these people exist. These people exist. So spend time with them, with people who value you, respect your boundary and uplift you. That is a supportive relationship. These are relationships that will nourish your soul and help you grow. And it's important to surround yourself with positive influences and to let go of those who drain your energy. And deep down, you know it. But for different reasons, we kept entertaining this kind of relationship. But that's how you get out of the cycle is when you stop entertaining this kind of relationship that are just draining you. So you have to learn how to say no, how to detach and how to let go. Remember that when you start prioritizing yourself, your needs and your happiness, everything, everything will start to fall into place. I promise you. Let's dive into real life shift example. Like you might stop answering work emails after hours. Yeah. Why you want to always do more? If it's draining you, you might say no to a party that you know you don't really want to go. You might say no, even if you feel that you will um, disappoint someone. It's okay to choose time for yourself with yourself instead of jumping on a last minute party that does not bring you any happiness. That is just to please someone. Sometimes you don't have to do that. If you want to, you can. That's the things. If you want to, you can. But if you don't, because it's not good for you, you don't have to. You start to say no to people that don't match your energy. What does that mean? Because, you know, it's, it's cool to have a lot of friends, but when they don't make you feel good because you feel that they don't value you, they just hang out with you because no one else was available, doesn't make you feel good, you know, because no question asked. When someone makes you feel value and good and seen, you are spending time with them as much as you can. But when after spending two hours, you suddenly don't feel good and you say, why did I come? That's when you have to recognize the sign and say no. But of course, setting boundaries and living intentionally isn't always easy, right? No, because you will feel guilty and you will face some pushback automatically. So you need to learn how to drop off the guilt by reminding yourself that you deserve all of it. You deserve the respect. You deserve to take care of yourself. And, you know, you have to hang out with the right person who respects your boundaries. And those who don't, you know. Maybe they don't deserve your time. So you have to remind yourself that to drop the guilt. Because for sure you feel guilty. I mean, the time I was like, how many times we're doing things because we feel guilty not to do it? Right? So drop the guilt. It's the hard truth, but it's part of the growth. Also, it's hard to stay firm in your decision. Because sometimes people insist and You feel guilty, you feel that pushback, but you have to stay firm. If you know that it's not good for you, don't do it. Last year, I didn't want to go to a trip to Vegas with friends that they were like, I can say. Um, I know that the trip will not be good because I went on a trip with them and the trip will not be good because they don't want to do the same things. They want just to go to Vegas and stay in their room. If I go to Vegas, I want to party. I want to go to the pool and I want to go out. I don't go to Vegas to stay in a hotel room. But that's what they want to do. So when they ask me to come with them, I say no. Because I knew by experience, because I learned the year before when it happened, that it's all what they want to do. And it's valid. But that's not what I want to do. And if I have to spend my money, my time, find babysitter for my kids, I want to spend the time the way I want to spend it. So I say no and take sure 
they make me feel guilty because after they can sell their trip to Vegas, but it's not my responsibility. What you put on the menu is not what I want to do. So I think I can say no. You know what I mean? To wrap up this episode, I wanted to I want to add that if some people cannot make the difference with you being helpful and having a supportive relationship by using your kindness to serve their interest and never support you, it's on them. But you have to learn how to say no. And that it's on you. You have to set your boundaries. I know, it's hard to hear, but that's the truth. Remember that you are teaching people how to treat you. So you have to show up in this world the way you want to be and the way you want to be treated. It's a hard lesson to learn, and trust me, I learn it the hard way. So it's important to respect yourself enough, to love yourself enough, because you are not the convenient and disposable girl. You are an amazing person and you're here and the right people will come. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate to hang out with you today. Uh, share this episode with someone who needs to hear this and share it on your social media and I will reshare. I have a challenge for you. This week, identify one area where you feel used and set and set the boundaries. Whether it's just saying no to an extra things to do at work or declining an invitation you are not excited about, whatever it is, just share this journey with me. Tag me at Virginie Fit and Strong. You can also tag the podcast, Happy Fit and Strong Podcast. I'd love to hear from you how it's going and how it makes you feel to say no to something that you don't want to do. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on uh, Spotify and Apple Podcast. Uh, I really, really appreciate all the love. Slide in my DM. I love to talk to you. Stay strong. Stay happy. I love you. Bye.